have like I don't want to have like any sexual relations with him at all at all at all. But at that time I was also in need of some money for some personal stuff that I wanted to sort. So that was already the idea of like stealing cash from him, like maybe from his car because mostly people used to like have cash inside their car in the middle place of their car. So the idea was that like if he agrees to do BDSM with us like to like BDSM is like the kind of sex where you tie the person's hands and legs. So while his hands and legs are tied, we can like take cash or whatever valuable we can find. And we all know that at some point our lives will come to an end, but I bet no one ever imagines it could end while experimenting in sexual fantasies and especially of an adulterous nature. But when one prominent businessman leaves his family one day and drives to a hotel to meet two young girls who had enticed him with a threesome of BDSM sex, he did not know that he will not be coming back home. Welcome and welcome back to Tavern Crime Chronicles. We explore mysterious, chilling, solved and unsolved cases, approaching them with empathy and extensive research. If you have the nerve for fascinating stories, this is your channel. So grab a drink and hydrate while I take you through the disconcerting story of one man's double life. Our story today takes us to Kwara State in the western part of Nigeria. With a population of 3.2 million people, it's ranked sixth least populated state in Nigeria. It is mainly occupied by the Yoruba, and they all coexist practicing the three religious faiths found in Nigeria, Christianity, Islam, and traditional religion. Kwara State is blessed with natural endowments in the areas of agriculture, tourism, and solid minerals. And you cannot be far away from the truth when you guess that hotels are the most lucrative business in Kwara State. And in this beautiful land with an invigorating weather favorable for tourists is Iloran, its capital, which saw the most shocking and embarrassing murders of one of its prominent businessmen. This is the story of Augustine Adeni Ojo. Born in Iloran, Kwara State to Chief Emmanuel Ojo, Adeni Ojo hails from wealthy family and is said to have been born with a silver spoon. Adeni would later grow up to inherit his father's empire, which comprised of mainly hotels and clubs after years of apprenticeship from his father himself. He upgraded the business, acquired new infrastructure, and built the business to higher standards, becoming the managing director of Waterview Hotels, Tanka and King of the hospitality industry in Kwara State. For the sake of this story, we shall be referring to him as Ojo. Mr. Ojo was married to one beautiful wife, and together they had three children. He was both a good husband, a father, and is said to have been a very committed Christian attending weekly fellowship. He would later be ordained as a pastor in the same Winner's Chapel, the Living Faith Church. And as an elder in the church, he was given responsibilities, and among them was the Human Resource Department, where he ensured the best candidates take up the various jobs available. It is through this office that his deadly sin of covetousness would first be noticed after a job at the church was advertised and some ladies who went to his office for an interview reported to have been harassed for sexual favors before he could grant them the job. One fateful evening while Ojo was going through the available CVS at one of his clubs, he noticed a beautiful young girl for the waitress job, Joseph Joy Adama, and copied her contact number. She would later be hired, and he found out that she was a student at Quara Polytechnic and had got a job to help support her personal needs at school. He started calling her as he made sexual advances, which she declined. He continued to pester her in the corridors and coerce her to give in whenever he came to the club, but she rejected his advances. One day, Adama would unfortunately lose her job after just three months of work when the government closed Mr. Ojo's club and she went back to full-time education without an income and this became very challenging. Needing some money for upkeep, she one day asked Ojo when he called her to meet up. 
He did not send, and this happened a lot, that whenever she needed financial assistance, Ojo would stop calling her only to come back later, when he assumed her problem had been taken care of. Adama confided in her friend and fellow student Vandora favor Oriolua Davies about a rich, influential man who is always pressuring her for sex. Yet he is stingy and can never offer any financial assistance whenever she is in need. Vandora, seeming to be one with ideas, said they should ask him to help them get jobs since he had all the big connections in town. And when he refused, they devised a plan, and what a sinister plan it was. Adama was to invite Ojo for a meetup so that he could get what he had been asking for, and to entice him, she told him that she would be coming with a friend for a threesome of BDSM. For those who may not know, a threesome is a form of group sex that may occur in private situations, such as spontaneous sexual activities among three friends or in the context of casual sex or a hookup. Alternatively, it may occur in specific contexts or environments that allow for sex, such as swingers events, orgies, or sex parties. On the other hand, BDSM is an abbreviation for bondage, discipline, domination, submission, and masochism, referring to a range of sexual preferences that include physical control, psychological control, and or pain. Ojo was really tempted, and he agreed immediately setting the day, time, and location. Vandora having given Adama a good training, they agreed that meeting and doing the deed in his car would be most appropriate as most men carry cash and other valuables in their cars. However, upon meeting at the gardens adjacent to his Waterview Hotel, it started to rain and Ojo insisted that they go inside so that he could deal with them. He joked. Adama, confused at what the next plan would be. Vandora asked her to keep calm as everything would fall into place. Adama noticed that Ojo showed immediate longing and affection for Vandora as he kept touching her and said he had liked her. They both excused themselves to use the bathroom where they devised a plan on how best to extort money from him without having sexual relations with him. Ojo was warming up and beaming with excitement that as soon as they left the toilet, he immediately grabbed Vandora and carried her onto the table. He later removed his clothes and laid on the bed naked ready to have the best day of his life. Vandora tied his hands to the bedpost, and Ojo raised his legs in excitement so that they too could be tied. As Adama tried to gag his mouth with a handkerchief saying they didn't want him to mourn with too much noise when pleasure gets unbearable, he refused saying that he could handle it and that made her panic. Adama would later sit on his lap trying to calm him by caressing his body as Vandora searched his trouser pockets, but unfortunately found no money. Vandora was now getting impatient, and she then checked her handbag for Rohypnol, a drug used to treat severe insomnia, but is often abused and used as a date rape drug as it causes extreme drowsiness. She poured the contents on her hand, and as she tried to pour them in her mouth, he turned away and they all poured on the bed and he said he did not need them to lighten up. Out of desperation, Vandora took Ojo's phone and showed it to his face so that it could unlock as it had a facial lock. Ojo now knew this was not a sex romp like he had anticipated but a robbery, and he started to shout for help. By now, it had stopped raining and the whole place was quiet. Someone could easily be heard through the door. He loosened the ties on his hands and began hitting Vandora, pushing her off himself as he fought for his life. Adama jumping into the fight to help, she grabbed a kitchen blunt knife from her bag that they had brought to threaten him and started pinching him with it so that he could stop hitting Vandora. In a bit to stop him from making noise, Vandora put a pillow over his face and when he went silent, they told him that they were leaving, but he did not respond. Unbeknownst to them, Ojo had breathed his last and off they left with his phone a blunt knife often used for cutting cake and the ropes they had used to tie him. Meanwhile, as it was getting close to the closing hour for the receptionists, they were shocked to find their boss's car neatly parked at its regular spot, but could not locate his whereabouts. The hotel staff became curious and conducted a search for him as his phone was no longer reachable. As they were doing a room-to-room -room search, they stumbled onto his lifeless body on the bed of one of the rooms. His hands and legs were tied, and it looked like they had forced a deadly chemical down his throat. 
When they noticed that his phone was missing, they immediately knew it was a possible robbery gone bad. On September 28, 2023, police would receive one of those many dreaded calls, and unfortunately this time it was someone they knew so well, a known socialite and a man of influence in society, and they came almost immediately. They rushed him to hospital, and he was pronounced dead on arrival and thereafter deposited at the General Hospital Mortuary for an autopsy. Investigations commenced almost immediately, with police interrogating the hotel staff, who swore to have seen some unknown men leave the hotel one after another, and they appeared to have been evading the receptionists on duty. Pressure on the investigation department was even intensified by the class of 1987 set of Cherubim and Seraphim School, Elornet was calling out for the arrest of Mr. Ojo's killers, their fellow alumnus. Through a meticulous investigation, the suspects Vandora and Adama were both tracked down and arrested in the Mo area of Ibafo, Ogun State on October 6, 2023. They collaborated with the police, giving a detailed confession of what exactly transpired. Surprisingly, they had initially thought that they had been tracked down because they had stolen his phone, but would later discover that Mr. Adeni Ojo had passed on. Vandor and Adama were prosecuted and remanded to prison, but their sentence hearing is yet to be heard. Who could have imagined that a crazy plan to steal from an older man desperate for sex could end up in a murder case and possible life sentence? Well, they say that if you lie, you will cheat. If you cheat, you will steal. And if you steal, you will kill. And this here sums up our chilling, crazy, but terribly disgraceful case for today. Tell me, what do you think or even learn from today's case? I for one know that sin can be addictive and whatever you do in the dark will one day be seen in the open. And that unfortunately was the case for Mr. Augustine Adenii Ojo, a husband, a father, a pastor in his church, and an influential businessman managing a chain of hotels. And as we usually say, choices have consequences. Unfortunately, the two young girls would be spending most of their life in prison. Their dreams extinguished just because they needed to grab some money that they did not earn. Well, thank you for watching and see you next time.